words of power because we are kings and our words matter. Joy is coming in the lives of people. People are being set free. People are saved. People are delivered from the bondages of the devil. People are helped. How many of you say, something has happened to you also? Eh? Have you experienced the power of the kingdom? See, something is happening today. There is another kingdom. You don't have to live in bondage to that kingdom, satanic kingdom. You can be set free. You can enter into another kind of life. There is a new possibility available for you today. Amen. Praise God. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. Let me read to you from verse 1. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Turn to verse 18 in the same chapter. There Jesus gives the meaning of the parable. He gives the interpretation of the parable, of the same parable. He says, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises, 
because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of the world, of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. This is a very important parable concerning the kingdom. So we're going to look at it in some detail for the next few weeks. Uh, the importance of this parable is uh, clearly seen by the fact that it is there in all of the synoptic gospels, in all the three synoptic gospels. There is Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, the gospels were written at different uh, periods, you know, some years apart from one another. So when one writes, he already knows that the other one has covered it and has mentioned it in his gospel. For example, Mark has already written it. And Matthew and Luke are aware that uh, Mark has already mentioned it in his gospel. They could have left it out knowing that uh, this has been already mentioned and covered in his gospel. But they go ahead and talk about it in great detail also in their gospel. That shows that this is a very significant parable and very important in the eyes of Jesus and the disciples, when they heard it, they thought they knew the importance of it. That's why all of them wanted to mention this parable in their uh, Gospels, except the Gospel of John. Now, verse 1 gives us the context, some clue about the context. The verse begins like this, 13th chapter, verse 1, begins like this. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. On the same day. Now, therefore, it means that whatever is there in chapter 12 happened on the same day as this teaching happened because those events took place and then on the same day Jesus comes out of the house and goes and sits by the seaside and teaches them. So everything happens on the same day. Why should he say on the same day? What is the significance of saying the same day? Because he wants us to realize that something significant has happened and in relation to this, this teaching is happening. It is kind of like a continuation of what has already taken place on that same day. These events are connected. So if you look at it that way, if you look at chapter 12 in verse 24, there is the story of how Jesus cast out devil from a man and the Pharisees were criticizing him. We talked about it. Pharisees are criticizing him saying, that uh, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. They're saying that Jesus is casting out demons by the power of Satan, casting out demons by a greater demon, casting out power, uh, demons by the power of Satan. That is the accusation, terrible accusation. And uh, they did not come out and in so many words say it. But uh, they were thinking like that and uh, they were having that in their mind and Jesus sensed that. And Jesus talks about it in the next verse. Jesus knew their thoughts, it says, and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. See here, why I read this verse is because in this story, the subject of the kingdom is raised. In talking about what the devil was doing and what he has come to do, Jesus says, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself will not stand. He's talking about the devil's kingdom. He says, there's another kingdom here. And then if ca Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then will his, will his kingdom stand? Notice how many times in that passage the word kingdom appears. He's referring to the satanic kingdom. So there is a sa kingdom of Satan operating in this world. A lot of people are not aware of this. The world is the way it is because of this satanic work that is going on. The Bible says, since it's Christmas and we are celebrating Christmas during these days. The Bible says, let me remind you, that Jesus came so that he may destroy the works of the evil one. So... 
Jesus is saying, look, there is a kingdom. There is satanic kingdom. It's working very much in this world, doing things in this world. And this fellow was demon possessed. And so I delivered him from the demonic bondage. So there is a satanic kingdom and I have come to set people free from the bondage of the satanic kingdom. The satanic kingdom seeks to bring everybody under its control, tries to control their life, tries to fill their life with all kinds of evil. And I'm trying to deliver them. I've come to do that, he says. So he says, if Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. And then listen. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, he's been talking about satanic kingdom. Now, all of a sudden, he says, the kingdom of God has come upon you. If it is true that I am casting out devil by the power of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. This deliverance from the power of Satan that he's bringing, casting out devils, healing the sick and all of that, that work is, is significant because it shows that the kingdom of God has come. Now, this is in line with all other things that we've been looking. Remember, the Pharisees came and asked Jesus, when is the kingdom going to come? Big expectation in the Old Testament days. They thought a palace and a king will come and he'll rule with a military power and he'll have great weapons and subdue every nation and bring great glory to the Jews and so on. They were expecting that. So they said, when is the kingdom going to come? That kind of a literal earthly kingdom. When is it going to come? Jesus said, it shall not come by, it, it will not come by observation. That means it will not come visibly. You won't be able to see it, he says. It's coming in another way. It will not come visibly. It will not come in such a way that you say, here it is or there it is. He says, the kingdom of God is among you or within you. Some translations say within you and some other translations say it's among you. Whatever it is, that's good enough. It is saying one thing, that the kingdom of God is here. Whether it's in me or among, me, among us, it doesn't matter. It is in here. Uh, you can say it is in you and you can say it is among you. We'll deal with that later on. But it is here. The kingdom of God has arrived. Many people view the kingdom of God as something that is going to come at the second coming of Jesus. So they postpone everything to the second coming. Nothing has come now, they say. Some people think the kingdom has already come. There is nothing more to come. This is a false, a wrong expectation to have that kingdom will come later on, they say. They believe that everything that can come has already come. They think everything is present. Everything has been realized already. There is nothing more to come. And uh, now, today, most of the Bible scholars believe that the kingdom of God has come in a certain way. And it is true that it's going to come also because all scriptures, if you read the Gospels and everywhere in the scriptures, all scriptures talk about it as something that has come and as well as something that is going to come. This is what has caused confusion over the years, but now they've come to the conclusion it has indeed come in a certain way. It is going to come in consummation, in total fulfillment later on. Both are true. All right. So the kingdom has come. In what way? It has been inaugurated. That means it has begun. The kingdom reign, the rule of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God has begun by the first coming of Jesus. That's very significant. See, sometimes people totally downplay the first coming of Jesus. This thing, the fact that he came and was born in Bethlehem and lived and died on a cross and rose again and went back. They talk as if this has not done much. They're talking about only the second coming as something that is going to do everything. You know, nothing much has come now. But the Bible doesn't present it like that. By Jesus coming into the world, something significant has taken place. The kingdom of God has come. It has been inaugurated. So everybody now talks about, a lot of people talk about the inaugurated kingdom concept. The kingdom has been inaugurated. So Jesus is saying that. He says, if it is true that I'm casting out demons by the power of God, the kingdom of God has come upon you. If it's true that I cast out devil out of this fellow by the power of God, then no one thing, the kingdom of God is here. So the subject to in, in that one little story, three times he's talking about the kingdom 
you know, he's talking about satanic kingdom as well as his kingdom. There is a satanic kingdom. Do you know there is a satanic kingdom? That is why people's lives are messed up. That is why things are as they are today in this world. Satan is the one that is working in the lives of people. Jesus walked into synagogue, found a woman. For 18 years, he was, she was bent over. He says, this daughter of Abraham, who was bound by Satan for 18 years, her I'm setting free, he said. So he didn't say that sickness, this sickness was an ordinary thing. There are some sicknesses that are directly the work of the devil, it seems like. You know, he says, I've come to set her free from this work of Satan. So the devil is doing a lot of things, including distributing sickness, distributing poverty, distributing every evil thing to make our life miserable, distributing family problems, marriage problems, all kinds of confusion, chaos into the lives of people. The devil's work is going on. Now the devil, his kingdom, the way it operates is very different from the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is different. The kingdom of God comes through the word of God. That is what we are studying now. Very decent. He doesn't come and barge in on you. He doesn't come and force himself onto you. He comes and talks to you. You got to open it. You got to come and hear. You got to receive. And you got to, you know, the reception. Your reception matters here. You can reject it or you can take it. God is very decent. He says, behold, I come and I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open, he says, if you don't open, I'll just go on. If you open, I'll come in. I'll sup with you and, and you will sup with me. That's the basis on which God works. He's very decent. He's a gentleman. He knocks on the door. He comes in only if you want him to. The devil is not like that. He's a guy who gains backdoor entry. <laughs> he breaks your wall to get in. He breaks your windows to get in. He breaks your lock to get in. He's an evil fellow. He's a thief. He's a robber. He takes you by at the point of a gun or a knife and takes everything that you have. That kind of a kingdom. This is an atrocious, terrorizing kingdom of the devil. We're talking about a totally different thing. This is what the devil is doing in this world. Look at the Bible, uh, demon-possessed people described in the Bible. You read about one fellow that was in the, in the graveyard tearing himself up and tearing others who come by there. And Jesus goes and delivers him. This is what happens. The devil is a mean devil. He wants to tear people up, destroy people, destroy their life and their family, their future, makes life into nothing. That's what the devil does. This is the kingdom of the devil. Jesus says, I've, he says, he just cast out the devil from that fellow. And he says, I cast out devil by the power of God and I'm telling you the kingdom of God is here. It has come upon you. What he's saying is, I have come to set people free from that demonic bondage. I have come to set people free from sickness, from poverty, from all of these things. That is why he said to the people that came inquiring from John about whether it's he that was to come or they have to wait for another one to come. He said, tell, go and tell John everything you see and hear. The blind see, the deaf fear, the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed and the dead are raised and the gospel is preached to the poor. What does it mean? It means the signs of the kingdom is everywhere in my ministry, he says. Ever since I came, I've been casting out devils, I've been healing the sick, I'm preaching the gospel to the poor. You know, their lot is being affected, their, 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 their fate is being changed, their lives are being changed. The, there is another power in operation in the world ever since I arrived, he says. Go tell John what you're seeing. It's not just the satanic kingdom that is at working. My kingdom has come. It's working. Tell him that I am the one to come. I am the king to come. So Jesus has come right in the middle of this satanic kingdom that is working in this world and arrived to bring about a difference in people's lives so that now healing is taking place. Joy is coming in the lives of people. People are being set free. People are saved. People are delivered from the bondages of the devil. People are helped. How many of you say, something has happened to you also? Eh? Have you experienced the power of the kingdom? See, something is happening today. There is another kingdom. You don't have to live in bondage to that kingdom, satanic kingdom. You can be set free. You can enter into another kind of life. There is a new possibility available for you today. 
that is what this whole thing means after this this thing and after some other things happening in this context then it says in chapter 13 on the same day on the same day on the same day as this happened this means this is a further discourse on the kingdom of God and it's working how it's working in the lives of people because he said it's not coming by observation by uh, it's not coming in a visible manner if it doesn't come in visible manner then how am I to know that it's there how am I to discern how it works how am I to know its operation how am I to live in it how am I to open my heart so that that work can be done in my life if it's not visible then how am I to understand it that's why this is a kingdom that you have to understand by revelation now this parable that we're going to study is a parable that gives us a revelation of the kingdom of God now parables they say are such that uh, there is only one main point in a parable so therefore these elaborate details must be avoided you know because uh, you know that is not necessary but that cannot be always true maybe in some cases it's true but in this parable particularly it cannot be true great details are there because it's talking about four kinds of soil the wayside the stony ground the thorny ground the good soil right uh, it's talking about the sower the seed it's talking about the devil who comes and takes away the word immediately yeah so the details are there that is why I'm going to take some time. I'm going to cover just one today. But we're going to talk about all the four different types of soils in which the word of the kingdom falls and what happens. The details are important because the details help us to understand the main point of the parable. I really believe that there is one main point. But the details help us to understand the main point. So let's look at verse 3. So he spoke in parables saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. The birds came and devoured them. All right? What, is, what does it mean? You see, he says the seed fell by the wayside as the sower began to sow. Now, what is a wayside? In those days, the people immediately understood what a wayside is. A wayside is the beaten path or path that has been trampled upon many times that is how it has become the wayside rightly named so because it's become the way for some people to go from this side to that side and come from there to here they're using this thing right in the middle of the field and slowly it uh, separates itself from the good soil and stands out so that when you look at a field you see the pathway so everybody takes that and trampling upon it a thousand times a day hundreds of people going up and down on it stepping on it walking on it makes it the uh, wayside uh, the thing is not made of tar or cement or anything they have not laid a road there it's just regular soil just like the uh, good ground that is there that is bringing forth uh, all kinds of fruit it's the regular ground but because it has been trampled upon so many times it has now become the uh, wayside now as the sower sows as i described last week uh, he carries a bag on his shoulders and puts his hand in there into the bag and takes the seed and sows it like this you know scatters you know the seed and as he scatters he intends to scatter it on good ground but it's uh, uh, you know you cannot avoid some of it falling on the wayside so some of the seeds fall on the wayside now jesus takes this real thing that happens every day in the eyes of people people see it every day and he uses it to describe how the kingdom works and uh, how uh, you know it operates in our lives today he says the sower sows the word and some seeds fell by the wayside and then he says the birds came and devoured them he says over sin he is conquered hallelujah he is conquered over death victorious hallelujah victorious over sickness he is triumph hallelujah he is triumph jesus reigns over all over sin over sin he is conquered hallelujah he is conquered over death victorious hallelujah victorious over sinners he is triumph hallelujah he is triumph jesus reigns over all for 
your hands and praise the one who has conquered over sin, over death, over sickness, over curse, over poverty, over every enemy that stands against us. He has conquered and therefore we have conquered. All praise and honor and glory be to Jesus in this place.